<laughs> I'm back, but I've already given my list. <laughs> you we, keep keep him company. We had to switch out Simon McCorkendale because he was making a lot of noise in the last video, so <laughs> that's not even more distracting. <laughs> John Travolta making out with Lily Tomlin while she's giving him a hand job. <laughs> So uh, I'm doing my bottom ten. Now it's time for uh, Sarah's bottom ten, and I don't like, like, uh, with Dave and anyone else, like, I, well, I mean, I know what movies I sent you earlier, but I don't know <laughs> what order yours are in, and I don't know which ones were left off. Did you see more or less bad movies than you thought you saw this year? Way less, because, yeah. well, you sent me a list of 11 movies, mm -hmm. which, with, uh, as I was telling you earlier, with zero exceptions, I saw all of these with you. So <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll be interested to see how many of these ended up on your bottom ten, because I believe you've probably seen way more bad movies this year than I have. There were... but most of these are what I'd term like a number 11 for most years, where it's bad, but it wouldn't make the list. That's what uh, some of Dave's were. Mm -hmm. Like, I did notice when I was sending you yours that there was, uh, or, or at least to my recollection anyway, there was, like, less of that than when I sent it to Dave. Because with Dave, like, a few of them I was, like, kind of struggling. Like, well, I remember he didn't care much for this. <laughs> with a lot of yours, I kind of remembered, like, us both really not liking him. Mm -hmm. The only one Dave had that I didn't see and wasn't there with him for was Girls Trip. <laughs> Which had like a 90 on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I know he didn't much care for Girls Trip, but um, t uh, Tiffany Haddish was on Drunk History last night. Oh, okay. And he was talking about how she was far and away the shining moment of that movie. <laughs> no, yeah. Like, I remember from their review where, like, it, it was kind of one of those movies like you were talking about with some of yours. Like, in any other year, that probably wouldn't have been on his list. Uh-huh. But well, one of my favorite things about uh, doing the bottom ten list is going back and rewatching the videos. Like I, <laughs> I skipped the previous parts, but uh, I want to kind of because I, I have a brain like a sieve, so yeah. like, most of these movies I don't remember watching them, and I mm -hmm. had to like remind myself what they were actually about. Yeah, and so it's nice, to, especially the January ones, to go back because January Sarah always leaves me a nice little message. Dear future Sarah. Hey, J hey December Sarah, January Sarah here. <laughs> like for number six, she's like, you know, this doesn't really belong in the bottom ten. <laughs> Like, you're wrong, my friend! You're wrong. I hindsight is not treating this movie well. I have that problem with certain snob episodes. Not with midnight screenings. Those I can kind of remember how much I liked or disliked them. On snob episodes, like, I just wrote an episode on Little Cars 2 and had to go back and watch the review for the first one. Like, this is still bad. It's like a Brazilian Cars knockoff. Mm. I'm glad I got fresh refreshed on that. But typically with midnight screenings, I... I still remember how bad Boo 2 a Medea Halloween was. <laughs> well, too, like, this this was a light year for me for bad movies, and so, like, as I was watching the videos, they kept, like, being, like, suggestions at the bottom for, like, the host, and, like, other terrible Miss, Miss Peregrine's School for Peculiar Children. I'm like, man, I don't want to talk about that movie again. <laughs> I don't want to just review that movie again. There's, I know I of remember it, that movie. I know of at least one that I had, and I, I won't. I won't guess it now, but I know of at least one that is probably on both of our lists. Because uh -huh. like my, my top four were pretty easy to pick out, and all the rest it was just putting in order, like you said, depending on the mood that I was in. Uh, yeah, depending on, like, it could change in any given week, some of the orderings when you get into the lower one, when you get into, like, ten through eight or seven. Mm -hmm. What do you got as number ten? I tell you, and I, I keep going back and forth, like, I've scratched off the tens... Tell you what, I have a tie for number 10. Okay. Let me just do that. So, mm -hmm. we got Fist Fight. Okay, yeah. And Everything, Everything. <laughs> everything, Everything was the, was the one I sent you. Uh -huh. And there's a reason why that was last on the list when I, I sent it to you. I noticed all of them were in chronological order. And then Everything, Everything was at the bottom. And that was obviously like a January, February one. Because of my hair in the video. Was it that long ago? It must have been. Um, It, it was one that... Uh, when I was scrolling through, I was mainly looking through, like, I remember she hated that one. I remember she hated that one. That one was one that, unless you could tell me differently, when I was scrolling through there, that was one where I was like, I remember neither of us cared that much for them, but let me see what else is on here. Mm -hmm. I went back up and was like, I better throw everything, everything <laughs> on there. Because, like, rewatching the video, our main problem with everything, everything, and this is why I was kind of vacillating back and forth, because one of them is uh, objectively awful, and one of them is subjectively awful. Sure. This fist fight... We, we, 
lapped several times, and like, like we mentioned in the video that we stayed through the ends, so we could watch the bloopers. So we weren't like oh. done and like stormed out the second sure. the credits started. Yeah. It's just that I hated it because it was that sort of movie where it's a main character who's embarrassed and anxious, and so he's making decisions based on that embarrassment and anxiety that yeah. are making the situation worse and worse and worse, like your Mickey Blue Eyes and your election. And so, whereas, like, some people would probably enjoy that movie, I did not much care for it, and it, uh, it ruined the night for me. <laughs> you were sitting there, like, I can always tell when it's a movie like that with you, and, and, and there's times when I'm the same way with that kind of movie. I, I don't remember being like that too much with Fist Fight, but I can tell when it's the mm -hmm. case with you, because you're just, like, it's a horror. I was barely hitting myself in the head for that one. <laughs> it's a horror film, <laughs> just sitting there watching through your eyes, There's hitting yourself in the head. <laughs> where he's just like, you know what, and if I don't want to have fisticuffs with Ice Cube, I'll like sneak drugs and do his things and call the police on him. It's like, no! That was the part I remembered you hitting your head. I remember you kick. the only time I can remember you kicking your seat was Fifty Shades of Black. <laughs> that was embarrassing for a completely different reason. It was, I think what was maybe carrying me through Fist Fight and why maybe I wasn't that, feeling that awkward during mm -hmm. it, is because it was one of those movies that set itself in a world that was almost like a parody universe. Uh -huh. Like the 80s movie Screwballs, where it's kind of a cartoon. Yeah. Where, like, everything, like... Like, everyone's fine at the end of that movie. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Like, it's one of the... Like, when you see how rowdy this school is, the students are taking a mattress and sliding down the stairs with it. Yeah. And that's, like, the first couple minutes of the movie. And I remembered being like, okay, so that's the universe we're in right now. <laughs> okay, Ice Cube, it's perfectly fine for Ice Cube to just go through the halls with an axe. <laughs> and then my other one, Everything, Everything, is yeah. objectively terrible, because it that's the one where it's like the little girl who had like the Bubble Boy disease, and yeah. we actually brought up Bubble Boy in that preview, but it occurred to me as I was re-watching it, it's the same plot as Bubble Boy, because Bubble Boy turns out not to be sick at the end of that one, too, because his mom was lying to him. Oh. It's been a while since so I've maybe seen it's that. A, I, I swear to God, isn't that... I, I, <laughs> If I'm lying, I'm crying, but I think that's how Bubble Boy ends. So this is maybe just like a remake of Bubble Boy. But apparently the writing was so, so bad for it uh -huh. that it was completely unbelievable from start to finish. So it's I felt like sad. I remember, I remember more. I can tell you more about moment by moment than I can the boy in the plastic bubble. <laughs> Not the boy in the plastic bubble. Bubble Boy. Oh, the Gyllenhaal one. Yeah. Oh. Where he's like oh, cross country yeah. and like his bubble with the gloves. Okay, right. I, I again, I couldn't remember boy. In the, I mean, I remember boy in the plastic bubble, but not to the point I remembered how it ended. Uh -huh. So like, oh, I mean, did he turn think, out to be okay by the end of that? I don't think he turned out to be okay in the John Travolta one. Okay, that one was serious. Oh boy, was a comedy. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in this one, yeah, like she, turned out she was fine. Her mom was lying. But that was the one where it was. I think. Um, its failure was in the piss poor writing and the really weird outfits they kept putting that poor little girl in. And that she has a total kind of nonchalant reaction to the fact she's been lied to all of her life. Yeah, she's kind of like, my, my mom's a monster, whatever. <laughs> Dude. We'll, we'll rebuild that relationship when I'm ready. Yeah, when we're ready. <laughs> Fine, movie. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's my ten. Um, number nine, I got Dark Tower. That movie sucked. Which, okay, I, I was rewatching the video and I apparently passed Sarah, thought it was fine, but you thought it was, and I quote, hot garbage. <laughs> and so I, like, you basically spent the entire review convincing me that it was hot garbage. Here's why this movie like, sucks. Yeah, I mean, like, probably, but I thought it was fun. It, for, for me, there's other, there have been other movies that have ended up on my bottom ten lists where they were where I found them enjoyable but I recognized their terribleness and so I totally. feel like Dark Tower falls into that category. That like, year Saving Christmas was all of our number ones. Yeah, and I'd rewatch Saving Christmas like like that. Yeah. But like Matthew McConaughey made it innately watchable and like yeah. the the interesting world the whole thing was set in, but that was not a good movie. <laughs> no, it dark it it wasn't on my list. Mm -hmm. Uh it, it 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 wasn't on my list of the year, but I I could see how it would be on anybody's list because uh -huh. it was terrible and with the hot garbage thing i remember saying that also when we came out of the movie because you, <laughs> you, you asked me like i mean in the video i mentioned it but it, i remember at outside of the movie you're standing out there like what'd you think i thought it was hot garbage yes no that's what i'm saying i told that story in the review 
Oh, okay. I just thought I I thought I was at like a loss for words in the review and be like, I'll just repeat our street talk. <laughs> then you guys, I have to tell you the story about what happened to us right after we got out of Dark Tower. I was like, what'd you think? And Brad said hot garbage. And I said, well, this will be fun because I okay. thought it was okay. I kind of remember that now from uh, from the review. I, this is why I, we watch these things. Because like otherwise, I'd have been like, Dark Tower. Well, no, because I know that I watched that. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't have even remember that McConaughey, McConaughey was in it, and apparently he was the <laughs> selling point of that movie. I forgot. All I remember was, like, Idris Elba and the three kinds of hepatitis he apparently had. The movie was a lame last action hero, kind of. Yeah, like, it wasn't great. It, like, in retrospect, I don't think it, it was as fun as I remember it being, probably because I expected it to be so, so bad, because the reviews that were coming out were just awful. It was... Like the nerds were so mad. And, and for a year that have been, that's been really good as far as Stephen King adaptations go, between Gerald's Game and it, mm -hmm. and then there's this movie. <laughs> like I get if if Irving was here, it'd probably be his number one uh -huh. because he well, he's a fan of the books. He yeah he and I've read a lot of Stephen King, not a lot of Dark Tower, but like. He knows way more about it than I do, and even I knew enough to kind of recognize the bullshit. Was it? It reminded me of Airbender, uh -huh. where like the Airbender movie, where it's like you're you're taking all this source material and you've kind of just condensed it and really sort of bastardized it into this hour and forty minute movie. Uh huh. <laughs> so I mentioned before that we that it was pretty much this is the Brad and Sarah show list. Yeah. And I noticed watching all these movies and saw all these reviews and Shotgun Succession is that we've got a couple of very specific references that we tend to go back to. Uh -huh. Those being Outboard. Oh, overboard. Overboard. Yeah. yeah. Where is Brendan Fraser right now? <laughs> <laughs> How this movie is like the air, the last Airbender. <laughs> Funny if we brought that up in like fist fight. Here's why it's exactly like Last Airbender. <laughs> There's a couple more that I noticed, but particularly the Brendan Fraser one, and how I still haven't watched the entirety of Encino Man, is mentioned like three times in the reviews on this list. <laughs> that, we do so many of these, so sometimes we forget like if we've had the same conversations in each one of them. I we talk about Brendan Fraser every minute of every day. Oh yes, there's an update on totally. that front. Allison said that he's like real sad and has to. He got like Dave Foley'd. And he's having to, like, make a bunch of movies every year in order to pay, like, alimony and child support payments. Oh, and it made me so sad that I went straight over to Amazon and bought George the Jungle on Blu-ray. Even nice. though it came with George the Jungle 2, which who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> and Drake... You get the Mummy Three instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the George of the Jungle Two is like it's starring Thomas Hayden Church, and I'm like, is he the George in that movie? It's like, no, apparently not. He's just still the bad guy, but now he's the highest rated name in the movie. <laughs> I would watch. The, I've never seen George of the Jungle Two, but I would watch it just because <laughs> just because Thomas Hayden Church is back. Uh -huh. I love Thomas Hayden Church. So I would watch it for that reason alone. He's a pretty amazing character because he was like the bad guy boyfriend in the first. Yeah. One. Mm -hmm. Anywho, um, so yeah, Dark What's, Tower was pretty bad. So number number eight, eight. Number eight. Okay, so I hesitated to put this one on the list, not because I didn't like it, which I still don't like it, but because um, I kind of got in trouble on the review for it. I think I know what this is going to be. Uh, so <laughs> this being uh, the Fate of the Furious, which I think I can talk a little more um, coherently about the reasons I didn't much care for this movie, because when we came out of the movie, I was just so angry that I was yelling about the writer for most of it. <laughs> oh um, man, I thought you were going to bring up the dinner. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> I figured, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's on here. Um, so, Fate of the Furious was a movie that we saw, and I was really, really, really looking forward to it, because I'm a big fan of the other Fast and the Furious movies. Mm -hmm. but I say that, and I what I really mean is I'm a fan of four through seven, because, <laughs> like, who gives We had a good time rewatching the first one. Yeah, like, with the context of four through seven. Um, sure. The second one, I don't even remember. I might have accidentally slept through that one. And then the third one was interesting just to see how Han died. Yeah. But then the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and to a lesser extent the seventh one, uh, are interesting because of, like, the, the way those characters play off of each other and, like, the genuine sense of family or la familia yeah. that, uh, that being in a gang together and forming those relationships is engendered. And then Fate of the Furious comes and uh, Xander Cage, for one of something better to do, not Dominic Xander Trudeau. Cage, Dominic Trudeau. I made that mistake that was, in the That video was last too. night's video. <laughs> Fuck. 
Dominic Toretto has like this weird heel turn because his ex-girlfriend had a baby who gets kidnapped by weird hacker Charlize Theron. And he's like, mm. and so instead of like asking his family for help, which is what you'd expect from that character, he instead like completely turns on them, leaves them completely in the dark, yeah. and starts doing crimes. Um, and then the course of the movie, um, this uh, this ex girlfriend of his, who's basically had this baby, didn't tell him about it because she didn't want to ruin his honeymoon. But then her and the baby get kidnapped, and he's like, "Oh no!" And she's like, "Here's your baby. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about him. I haven't named him yet because I figured that you'd that want to." That was my to. favorite part of the whole thing. Um, <laughs> hadn't named him yet. <laughs> and then she immediately gets shot in the face. <laughs> So everything turns out fine, they rescue the baby, they like drive cars into a submarine, and then at the end of the movie, is it, uh, he like gives the baby to Lady, like, here you go, this is your baby now. Uh, also, I've named him Brian, after, uh, after Paul Walker's character. Not Han. Not Han. <laughs> not, God fucking forbid, after your poor sainted dead mother. <laughs> But Brian, after yeah. my dead friend, uh -huh. and the audience goes, ah, and I meanwhile done a couple of rage laps in the lobby because that's like one of my least favorite plot twists. Yeah, um, which I actually mentioned in one of the other movies on this list, so it's like, ha, there's precedent. Mm -hmm. I got trolled in the comments. People thought I was being overly sensitive, but I did say in the review that it's that I don't expect other people to hate this movie for that reason. That's just why I hate this movie. Yeah, and I thought you did a really good job of explaining that. And yeah. any any kind of backlash you got was a lot of people just hearing what they wanted to hear and ignoring it's what YouTube. contradicted you that. Know, what you sure, it, 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 it happens. Uh, it Believe me, it happens any time Dave and I are seeing like, a Star <laughs> Wars movie. But, like, um, and that's what everyone has a, an issue like that about a certain thing like you're talking about that particular trope and cliche with me it's usually more like uh when the animal necessarily dies halfway through and i've certainly seen that done well but then i've seen it other mm -hmm. times where it's like okay come on stop you're trying to make me sad you stupid movie. yeah yeah exactly so i get it i get it and mm -hmm. with fate of the furious that was lazy writing certainly mm -hmm. it, it was the movie still gave me enough, I don't think it, I didn't like it as much as some of the other ones in the series, but it, it still gave me it enough It had those of, cool moments, yeah, as like, the Furious movies always have, like, yeah, she's it, like, it, when she takes over the cars, yeah, to, like, zombie cars, off of the yeah. parking garage and, like, attack yeah. the Russian ambassador, the scene where they're driving across the Arctic tundra to, like, try to chase a fucking submarine with their cars, when, is amazing if, you know, technically suspect. <laughs> When Dwayne Johnson re-aims the missile on the ice mm -hmm. to hit those cars or whatever, <laughs> like, it had The Rock guiding a missile with his arms. <laughs> I believe it. And, yeah, you just kind of accept it in these movies, because, sure, that could happen. Why not? <laughs> but, you know, and even stuff like that, there's better moments like that in... Four through seven, you know. It's, I agree with that. Really like driving cars off of buildings and into other buildings, you know. Mm -hmm. He like fucking drives a car up into a helicopter and flips under, so the bomb that's on his car unclips from his car and clips onto the helicopter, and then so the helicopter blows up. Was that also in a? That's just my jam. I I, I forgot they also did it because I remember they do that in Transporter Two. Is or that state, what I'm thinking of? Or state that I mean, could have also happened. It's like, there's like a thing with the helicopter, and they do something cool with it, and then the the rock has to like shoot it with his gun. Okay, yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm kind of remembering that. I remember it in Transporter 2, where the bomb was on the bottom of his car. He hit it at like a flip, and then the it latched onto the helicopter, and the helicopter blew up. Yeah, I but, think I'm thinking of Transporter. But what was it or then when... What was it then when he the Rock thing with the shot it? Yeah, yeah. He, he, like he, mm -hmm. his daughter like brought him his gun or something, and he's like both of his arms were in cast. That was awesome. That was the <laughs> seventh one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> we just like dragging like the the two, um, dragging like the two giant storage containers, one of which had a safe in, and the other yeah. one, like down the street and like in perfect synchronicity. That's the shit that I like, where they're like working as a team to yeah. achieve a goal of heisting and criming. Well, I get I I. I guarantee you still would have liked it better than Triple X, The Return, the Return of Xander Cage. I mean, probably. <laughs> you would. Well, you might have been more, because of that plot point in Fate of the Furious, uh -huh. I, I think 
you would have been more mad at Fate of the Furious, but I think overall, objectively, you would have thought it was a better movie than Triple X3. Because it's the one you were texting me where he like had to have sex with all those ladies to get his fur coat back? I mean, he yeah, had a PG-13 film, like it's... Did one of them have the coat and he didn't know which one? I've been trying no, to figure out it was, he thing. left his fur coat from the first movie, which apparently was an important thing. Uh -huh. Whatever. Like, yeah, so he's like, I'll take this mission, but first there's something I need. And he flies to some other country, mm -hmm. and I guess he's been keeping his trademark fur coat in like a harem. So you just, the camera just pans up. It's good security, I guess. Because <laughs> the harem would be like, no! The camera pans up with all these like half-naked women just laying there unconscious. So I don't know if he just fucked them unconscious. But it pans up, and Vin Diesel is standing there just shirtless with his over, with his fur coat on, uh -huh. and then he says, the things I do for this country, like, blow me. <laughs> See, that's even more confusing. Like, they were like, you can have this coat, but answer me these riddles three, or it have sex with us all unconscious. No, nah, that would be way more interesting. Like, that would be what you would see if, like, it's if it's actual triple X and it was made in 1980 and he's played by Robert Kerman. Like, that's what would happen in that. <laughs> Maybe he didn't have sex with any of them and all the ladies were just sleeping and so he had to sneak in and get his fur coat. Like, that a makes full of bears. Considering what he looks like in the film, that's what makes the most sense. <laughs> wake up and be like, no, where'd the fur coat go? God, you're good. <laughs> so, number seven, I've got The Space Between Us. Yeah, that was lame. Starring uh, Asa Butterfield. Mm -hmm. um, I just, the one of my notes on that Oldman. one is Brendan Fraser. So apparently we, a lot of that review was us talking about Brendan Fraser. Where he is now? Where's Brendan Fraser at? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Gary Oldman is like the, turns out to be his dad character. But he's like, he's a little kid in space. Yeah. Because his mom went to space and then died. Um... And then he comes back to Earth, and he's not taking to the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, he, he wasn't allowed to go back to Earth because he wouldn't take to the Earth's atmosphere, but he'd made, like, a little internet friend, and so he, like, goes back to Earth. He, like, talks him into letting him go back to Earth just for, like, a second, and then he, like, sneaks away to find his internet friend and try to find his dad because he has, like, this picture. It's just everything, everything again, except yeah. it's in space. It's, uh, if the bubble was Mars, that's what this movie is. Yeah, pretty much, except it turns out he really does have space sickness and is super that's not true. allowed to be on Earth. That's true. He wasn't being lied to by Gary Oldman. Nah, man, you just need to stay on Mars. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pay child support. Like, th this is another movie where... Um, the ranking is somewhat arbitrary because I don't remember very much about it. Neither I just do I. remember generally being super, super bored. Um, yeah. And the writing not being very great. Like, at least in Everything, Everything, there were some moments that were kind of clever. Like, they had the the whole premise of her building her models, the little spaceman, yeah. and, like, whenever she was having a particularly strong emotion, it would, like, interpret that via a little vignette with the spaceman. Mm. Everything, every, or the space between us, it was just, like, him saying the emotions he was having, or not having is the case, maybe. Yeah. And Gary Oldman, like, chasing him quietly, weeping to himself. I have nothing to chime in on with this movie. I, right? I... Gary Oldman had really cool glasses in it. He had, like, those cool hipster dude, like, clear... those were his actual glasses. Frames. That would make sense. They looked like rich guy yeah. glasses. Which made sense, because he was playing mm. a rich guy. Um, but that was another movie where, like, sometimes we get into those, like, June Diane Raphael arguments where we, <laughs> neither of us were paying much attention at the end, so we don't really have a firm grasp on how the movie actually ended. And so she either did or did not go to space with him. Um... I think you think that she did. She was training sense. to go to space. Yes, and I missed that part completely, so I thought she just fucked off back to Tulsa. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Whataburgers are better there than they are on <laughs> Mars. Um, right, because he goes back. He has to and go back. She's like training. She's training at the space station, so I. Yes. Okay, I kind of remember that. Because she kind of sort of gets adopted by the lady character. Yeah. Um, because she's in the foster system, and the lady was like wanted children but couldn't have children, but wanted them. Is that the one where she's like rebellious at the beginning of it? Or yeah, something? Cause she's like in the foster system, but she's she's just kind of like a free spirit. Right. I 
I get a lot of her roles in movies confused. I'm like, is this the one where she's the rebellious one, or was that Tomorrowland? Yeah, I'm like, I'm trying to picture in my head who this person is that was playing that character. Uh, I've liked her in a few Such things. A huge blank nothing. I mean, I can picture her, I just can't think of her name, much like everything else about this movie. I don't even remember Asa Butterfield because it's such a goofy name. Yeah, yeah. Because he was in Ender's Game. Right. And, uh, that Miss Peregrine. Dumb. Talk about it. We could talk about Miss Peregrine. They ate eyeballs in that movie. <laughs> There's like a big plate of eyeballs. It was a children's movie. Yeah, at least that movie was delicious. I respected that because that was like, okay, this is the kind yeah, of. Yeah, that kid, was fucked up. This is 80s kids' movie. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I respect this. <laughs> what are we on? Number six? We are or? on number six. Yes. Yeah, so number six is the movie that I was talking about with uh, past Sarah, uh, being Underworld Blood Wars. I remember even less about this movie than the space between us. And that, I think, was the problem, because as I was discussing in the review, I tend to think fondly on the Underworld series, because I only ever remember the 20 minutes of action scenes that mm -hmm. are in each movie. And then, but the problem is, is that around that, in like a stuck cocoon, is like an hour and a half of boring, hissing exposition of between e vampires of different types. Yeah. Um, the worst goth bar reenacting Shakespeare. Like, that's a lot of these movies. Yeah. I, <laughs> you actually make that, like, that... That's... God damn it. You Did make, I say that in the... <laughs> I'm bringing back my greatest hits. <laughs> <laughs> we're in our own... We're trapped in our own brains. Um, yeah. So... It's like, um, she's, she, I, I just watched the review and I can't remember what the plot of this movie was. It's something oh, about, God, like, I... blonde vampires and she had to go to them for help and she had a kid, but then the kid went away and she's, like, trapped in the ice. She had special um, vampire powers. This was, because I know that a lot of these, you go back and look at the reviews mm -hmm. for them. This was the one where it was the the one the number one one in my head where I was like this is definitely going to be the one where she goes back and watches the review because <laughs> it was like is January and I forgot it even came out in 2017 it it's like most underworld movies for me where I just am sitting there and letting it happen, mm -hmm. and I don't much like it. And, just, <laughs> <laughs> and I just kind just of lay back and think of English. <laughs> I just kind of just want it to be, because there's always so much you can say about these movies. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of liked the third one, all right, the one that was the prequel that had a lot more Michael, Michael Sheen, Sheen in it. Yeah, yeah. that was the Michael Sheeniest one. Yeah, and I remember kind of liking that one because whether you like the third one or not, at least it's different enough to where you can say something different about it, uh -huh. whether you, or good things you like about it or whether you didn't like the movie. I kind of like the third one. The rest of them, you're just reviewing the same movie it's again. It's just like the, the vampires versus the werewolves, and in this one it was like the vampires versus the other vampire. Yeah. Who was like tricking them into killing each other, and then she went to Norway, and then she got trapped under the ice at the end. I think. I can't even remember that much about it. Like, was Charles Dance in it again? It seems like a movie I he'd be he in. I think he was in the flashbacks. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> or was it Bill Nighy? Yeah, Bill Nighy. Was he in this one? I think, no, Charles Dance was in this one. Bill Nighy was in the first one. Because, okay, because both this and Resident Evil had Game of Thrones people in it. Yeah, because Charles Dance's son was who was like her little vampire partner in this okay movie. and charles dance i think like had a heel turn halfway into the movie it was in the same side as the bad guy i don't remember Neither i remember they had like this huge gatlin gun with like bullets made out of light in it and at one point they were just like mowing down rows of vampires and that was like the last 10 minutes of the movie yeah. and that part was super fun so yeah. do like a super cut of just that and you'd be fine but yeah, that's the reason it's on my bottom list. And again, no, I don't blame this, is you. The, this is the one I was talking about, where it's like, I take a whole break to have a conversation with n now me, to yeah. be like, look, you're going to be trying to figure out if this is going to be on the bottom ten. I don't think it belongs on there. It wasn't that bad. It was just kind of boring. <laughs> and it's like, Sarah, but Sarah, I need I need movies to put on my list. Yeah. So you're making, the, you're making the cut, buddy. I need to be more cognizant of that this year. <laughs> like... This looks like shit, Sarah. Sarah sent Sarah to go see it. Yeah. She's not upset, let me think. 
So, okay, number five. And this is the last of, like, the also rans because, like, one through four, I had a pretty, pretty easy time picking out. Yeah. And the rest are just, like, in some semblance of an order. But number five would be uh, Roman J. Israel. Which I think is Oscar nominated this for year. Best actor. We did not much care for it. No, it was uh, I. I forgot I sent that movie to you. I mean, I know why I did because it was like the same reason. Glad as, you like, did. It made number five. On my yeah, list. exactly. It's a little higher on yours than I thought it would. I thought I would have put. I would have if I. I would have guessed like maybe number ten or nine for that. Mm -hmm. But that was a movie that didn't have much focus like at all it was yeah, no it was a movie that didn't know what it wanted to be yeah and it had that fault in it of characters making decisions that were piss poor and annoying and not in even in a way where you could understand a human being making those decisions yeah but more that you could understand a screenwriter making a character make those decisions because mm -hmm. they needed the plot to go a certain way so like in the middle of the movie he just steals a bunch of money and it's dumb and it's pointless <laughs> And it doesn't make any sense for that character, but he does it because that's what needed to happen in that moment. It was a, and now this is happening movie. Yeah. Like, it's like time to go to the shore and buy a fucking turkey bacon bagel. It was a donut. Oh, it sorry, was a it was turkey. A donut. It was a glazed turkey bacon donut. Which is only now occurring to me. That's fucking disgusting. It, but it's my main takeaway from that film, because <laughs> I can't lie. Like, when I saw that, he was talking about that as if that's normal, but it's the first, and maybe it is in certain places, but it was the first time I've ever heard of something like that. So Turkey now... Bacon donut. Well, now whenever I'm at... It, this happened when I was at Hy-Vee earlier, uh -huh. and they have a donut, the big donut section there. It's and different the kinds. Honestly, I was because there was a lot of different kinds of. There was ones with like cereal on it, and things like that. Uh -huh. Stuff that made sense, but yeah. stuff that you don't see everywhere. And I was like, "Do they? Do they have that?" And I didn't see it at Ivy, so get on that. Well, we did. We did have the um, the chocolate covered bacon at the state fair that one year, and that shit was was uh, amazing. Mm. But for me, the difference is like chocolate is kind of it's sweet, but it's complex. Yeah. Whereas the glazing on a on your average like mellow cream or um, crispy cream, cream donut and, yeah. is just this sort of like cloying sludge. Yeah. And trying to imagine what that coupled with turkey must taste mm. kind of makes my mind static out. Because <laughs> <laughs> like I don't even like syrup on my on my breakfast sausage. Oh, like, see, then you wouldn't. <laughs> you know, that seems like it, that's like the worst possible end scenario to that thought. <laughs> Were you there the year we had the Krispy Kreme burger? No, that sounds disgusting. It wasn't very I don't even good. Like it wasn't a straight up Krispy Kreme. It's just like mushy, like mush covered with sludge. Yeah, it was one of those things where it was like it was. It was bad because, like, the burger was bad on it, uh -huh. but this movie, uh, the... This movie is like unto a Krispy Kreme burger. <laughs> it's a lot of things that separately are fine, but you put them together and it doesn't make much sense. Exactly. Um, although it did end with playing I'll Be Around by the Spinners, which is one of my favorite songs of yeah, the 70s. Yeah, like a slow zoom out of Colin Farrell's tuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you're waiting for something to happen in that ending shot... It doesn't, doesn't, like, unclench his butt cheeks. It doesn't start doing, like, a booty dance. Mm -mm. He doesn't, like, do a tilt and fart. <laughs> but, hey, best actor nomination. I mean, who he got, is who good at it. Huh? Who got nominated? Denzel. Really? I mean, he is good in the film, like, but it I was... I don't know, man. You know what? You know what I can... Maybe I it see this... like, the writing so much that it seemed like it was... Uh, he was, in my opinion, what the, the better thing about the movie. I could see him in that performance working in something that was a better written film. Mm -hmm. But it was... It's one of those Oscar nominations for me where, like, yeah, I could think of plenty of roles I'd stick in there other than Denzel Washington in this movie. But it was one... It's Isn't like it when like, Meryl Streep gets nominated for something that's bad. Uh-huh. It's because like, well, it was Meryl Streep. Yeah, and that's kind of what I'm... Has Denzel ever won an Oscar? Oh, twice, yeah. Uh, okay. Training Day and Glory. I get it. Because like, sometimes you see someone nominated. It's like, well, yeah, because they, 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 they deserve one at this point. Yeah. But if he's already gotten one, yeah, I don't think that Roman J. Israel was the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when... Uh, Meryl Streep won for the Iron Lady. It's like, really? Okay. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. She's Meryl Streep, so it's not like she's bad at yeah, it. She can strip her way out of any old movie. Yeah. <laughs> she should have been nominated for She-Devil, goddammit. <laughs> the Death Becomes Her. <laughs> she did a really good job of acting like a dead lady. <laughs> uh, number four. 
Number four. I'm blurring my eyes when I look down at your list. Fifty so I can be surprised. Shades Darker. Okay, this I. And I wrote down a quote from myself on the review for this, which is I knew ahead of time this movie was gonna need to fuck itself. <laughs> because you kept saying, man, this movie should fuck itself. I kept saying that. Yeah. This, and that movie can go fuck itself. <laughs> that one was also on my list. It's not the one I was thinking of earlier, but that was just because I forgot about this movie. <laughs> it wasn't because like, oh, she won't put that on there. No, no. I, yeah. I, I saw it. She loved it. It was on my list. It was like number nine or eight on my list. Uh -huh. But so, yeah, I talked about it plenty with Dave <laughs> last night. Yeah, that... Hmm. I keep forgetting that the third one comes out next month. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to have to read the book and yes. fucking live tweet it. Plus, like, like, the first book I found for free. Mm -hmm. The second book I bought for, like, $2 at a used bookstore. The third book, I have to go to the damn library and rent fucking Fifty Shades free from an actual physical librarian. <laughs> Or resign myself to spend money for this shit new on Amazon uh -huh. because I can't find it in the used. But everyone who bought it must be keeping their copy, so maybe it's way better than the first two. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> they finally got it right. It's opposite Godfather trilogy. Neil James perfected the formula. What was the line in the movie that? And I was trying to remember so this. Fuckery. That's it. The line that made me go. What? It was like, fuckery. I said something during the movie because I didn't want to be too loud. You of said, the fact that you had... "Wow." Okay, that's it. Uh, that sounds like me. yeah. <laughs> you and your said, kinky fuckery. I'm trying to be wow. romantic, and you keep trying to distract me with your kinky fuckery. And you said, "Wow." <laughs> <laughs> you damn right. Wow. <laughs> uh, the... It was not a great movie, and it was, I think, to its detriment that they kept it more. Um, not religiously, more... Uh, Accurate to the book? Yeah, or, exactly. Uh, I think that in the first movie they knew that they were, you know, doing trash off of a trash book, a trash garbage book, and so they changed a bunch of stuff, and it made the movie actually far more enjoyable than the book was, although it's certainly not by any means a good movie, at least an enjoyable <laughs> movie. The second movie was painful to sit through. It was. And it was because it was like five different plots and they were mm. all different plots taken from romance novels and it was not done well because it was about this codependent mouse of a woman and her abusive monster boyfriend. <laughs> and everyone else in this movie who's a creep too. You remember the scene with the uh photo gallery at the beginning of the film. Yeah, because everyone in Anastasia Steele's life is in love with her secretly, but not terribly good at secretly. <laughs> yeah. And so her photographer friend has taken like a bunch of super close up pictures of her face and is doing like a doing like a gallery showing of just all the super mm -hmm. close-up pictures he's taken of Anastasia Steele's face. Mm -hmm. And Christian Grey does not like that one bit, so he buys all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and this is while they're broken up, because he just beat her with a stick, and she didn't much care for that. And she decides, well, we should probably get back together. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, might as well. He's already got the best pictures of her. <laughs> I don't know. And the, it, it's a movie that tricks you into thinking there's stuff happening. And there isn't. <laughs> it's, it's resolved like, so fast. Because, like, there's, there's that one scene where he's, like, he goes missing in his helicopter, yeah. and everyone's like, oh, no, where's Chris Gray? Okay, he's fine. Turns mm -hmm. out he's fine. They're like, they just did a news report that says he's fine. Yeah. Or, like, um, the her boss character, who, per the previews, is is coming back in the thir third movie. Jack, yeah, thank God. Jack Hyde. We need to see that guy again. Um, where he, like, all of a sudden turns on her and tries... To, I think he like, tries to rape her. Yeah. And luckily, luckily, Christian Grey is right downstairs, and so he goes up and he fires the guy because he owns the company. Mm -hmm. And Anastasia Steele gets his job because that's how publishing works. Doesn't he buy the company so that he can fire him? He buys or the company. It's it's. I, I have a hard time remembering because he buys the Same. company in the book, so that he can exert control over every aspect of Anastasia Steele's life. He yeah. doesn't like that she gets a job, and so like, um, when Jack is gonna take her with him to uh, the New York business trip, mm -hmm. Christian Grey calls the like head honchos and it's like, I don't think they should be allowed to take secretaries in these trips, and so they re remove the budget to allow Anastasia Steele to go. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for the it's just because he's Christian Grey, he's a fucking scumbag. What does he even do? 
I don't even remember. Business. Business. It's like I... It's like I understand what Bruce Wayne does. <laughs> Business. I I understand like so many other rich characters. Uh, Business. E. Edward Gray from uh, the better version of this character from Secretary. Uh huh. Uh, he does business. Yeah, I mean like. Yeah, it's like mostly you just know them like, oh, businessy, business, business. Yeah. But I can, ra there's enough Myself. information given to me about Bruce Wayne that uh -huh. I can wrap my head ar around what he does. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the fuck Christian Grey does. I know that he donates money to Africa for mm. hunger because he was hungry when he was a child. And again, I, I'm surprised that information is still in my brain because that's from the first book. Um... <laughs> He's rich in the but same way... he gets his money, I haven't the foggiest. He's rich in the same way that a love interest in a Hallmark Christmas movie is. Yeah, just arbitrarily rich. <laughs> yeah. He's rich enough to buy, like, flattering sweaters... Yeah. ...and take you out to a nice dinner. <laughs> <laughs> buy you a golden retriever puppy with a bow on it. And put him in that scary gliding plane from the first movie. <laughs> Fuck that. I thought you liked me. <laughs> <laughs> Number three... Number three, tulip fever. <laughs> so, that was the one when I sent you the. It, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed or not, but when I sent you the list, for whatever reason, my phone decided that was the title it was going to capitalize. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important that tulip fever be properly capitalized. Yeah. And tulip fever, I think, probably would have been higher on the list. Mm hmm. If it weren't for the sex scenes, which feels... Oh. Because, that like, the sex scenes were the interesting thing about that movie, and the rest of it was just yeah. boring garbage. Mm -hmm. The thing is, like, that movie was, like, critically panned. Yeah. And it's because it was missing huge chunks, and because it was, um... Boring as shit. Yeah. And because it was, uh, had delays being put out because it didn't have enough money and like they'd spent a bunch of money on it, but it turned out that some of it might have been stolen. It's just shit like that. Yeah, it was made like three years ago. Yeah. Mm -mm. Um, and it's like, there's parts of it that are just super gross where I'm having to watch like Christoph Waltz talk about his soldier. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and my flawless Christoph Waltz impression. You're welcome, America. <laughs> but he's like, he's like, he's playing this like Dutchman who bought a wife and is trying yeah. to impregnate her, and it's 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 played to be gross, but it's it, the rest of it's just like this jumbled mess of 1600s, 1600s maybe, farce. It has the plot of a. It, 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 yeah, it has the. I remember that. It has the plot of what you would think would be a screwball comedy. Uh -huh. Because one person's got to hide their pregnancy, the other one's got to pretend to be pregnant, which mm -hmm. I think is the plot of a Lindsay Lohan movie. <laughs> and But in this, it's played so straight. So straight. And it's got Zach Galifianakis in it. And it's got this, like, doctor character who's, you know, like, kind of, like, weirdly zany, but it's not a oh, zany yeah. movie. So he just shows up and is zany for no reason, and it makes it feel kind of. Of like jarring and rapey because she's like oh you know I'm having trouble conceiving with my husband he's like oh I've got just the thing step in this back room I'm gonna impregnate you oh yeah yeah that guy who played that guy I don't know I picture the <coughs> I know the character but I can't pick I can't put a face to it and it came across to like I don't know, because I, I know some of this was shot at least a couple or a few years ago, but then there was stuff with, like, Cara Delevingne that mm -hmm. felt like it was just shot within the last year. Yeah, like they'd included it to make the tulip fever portion more prominent. Because, yeah. like, I, I, I did a bunch of reading ahead of time, so I'm like, tulip fever, what's that? And it's basically, there was this, this like... <sighs> this huge rush for tulip bulbs in Holland for, like, eight months, where, mm -hmm. I, like, all of a sudden just demand exploded because everyone was bored and liked tulips yeah and then all of a sudden it just petered out mm -hmm. and so it, people were left destitute and you know lots of people will commit suicide it was like a whole big thing it was like a stock yeah. market but with tulips yeah and so like i feel like maybe they maybe they played it for like a test audience and they're like we want more tulips and so maybe they're like we want more caradella stuck, <laughs> stuck in more tulip sorry because she was like a like a weird tulip thief where she was yeah. like in on the tulip stock market, but then she stole the guy's tulip, and then mm -hmm. she was like, where's my tulip? And she's like, ah. Yeah, and she, she looked like she did in Valerian. Mm -hmm. Like, not what not what she looked like when she did, like, Paper Towns or something uh -huh. like that. And, yeah, so it's 
all the stuff with the tulips involving her and like all the history of the tulips and everything. I was sitting there watching it thinking, this is kind of random, but I'm sure it's a real thing. You know, like when you see a thing in a movie where it's like, this is, I, I don't know if I need all this information or this is really random, mm -hmm. but I, I do feel like it's something that did exist in real life. <laughs> really like the tulip fever thing. History lesson. The tulip fever thing yeah. was very real. I don't mm -hmm. know if the... Christoph Waltz character was any like based on any real person probably not but I think probably whoever because it was based on a book you know yeah yeah probably whoever wrote the book read about tulip fever and thought ooh this is interesting but I better throw in some boobs just to keep people interested <laughs> some steamy sex scenes <laughs> yeah um was the book supposed to be any good I don't know I feel like my mom read it but I don't uh, recall her saying one way or the other yeah I think probably it was just okay it must have been fairly good if they wanted to make a movie out of it sometimes <laughs> <laughs> then there's Fifty Shades Darker <laughs> well I mean yeah but some I know people what you mean. like Fifty Shades Darker <laughs> like I know, I know what you mean yeah um <laughs> yeah, I, I'd never even heard of the book until oh. I got a trailer for this movie. And when I got a trailer for this movie, because it's a period piece and it's like the same writer as like Shakespeare in Love. So I'm like, okay, well, this will probably come out like Oscar season or something like that. No, when it said the release date, it was like the following week in yeah. August or something. I'm like, okay, well, this is the just first I'm hearing. Shit out. Yeah, this is just getting shit out. Like, and it came to Springfield, like Shape of Water hasn't come here yet, or the Disaster Artist. And you haven't gotten the Shape of Water yet? No, I had to see it in New Orleans. It's, it's fucking Oscar now. Like, I want to watch the Sexy Fishman movie. I'm sure it'll come out now, uh -huh. since the Oscar nominations have come out. We just got I, Tanya Again, I saw that in New Orleans, but mm. like, uh, so... Yeah, we haven't gotten, like, Shape of Water. We never got the Disaster Artist. But, oh, we got Tulip Fever when that was supposed to come out. <laughs> I've got Tulip Fever. <laughs> okay, so number two, I've got the dinner. Okay, so I know what your number one is, but I won't guess. Uh, <laughs> the di Yeah, the dinner was rough. That was, it, it was, it didn't make mine, but it was rough. Um, and I've read, I, this is another one where I wrote down a quote from the review that we did. This movie is like having a nightmare about eating worms. Did it's, you say that? Yes, I did. <laughs> and it's because not only is it gross to have a nightmare about eating worms, but then you spend the next couple weeks thinking about how gross it would be to actually eat worms. Yeah. And this movie was like that, in that it's about like this horrible father and his... Uh, his wife whose life he effectively ruined and their monster children who mm. like murder a homeless man yeah. and they have to figure out whether to turn them in or to murder a different child who's blackmailing their children who's actually the child of his brother yeah um and so it's like oh uh, you have to think of like what it would be like to have to be in that situation to uh -huh. like have monster children or you know be a homeless person to get set on fire by monster children or like have the person that you're married to slowly degenerate to mental illness and turn yeah. your children into monster children. And Gettysburg. And Gettysburg! <laughs> which I still know nothing about. Because <laughs> every single part of that movie they started being like, well, you know, in Gettysburg, it was yeah. like... <laughs> <laughs> you didn't miss shit with the Gettysburg stuff. Nope. <laughs> like you could have just just dreamed about the movie Gettysburg and gotten more out of it than... I've never seen the movie Gettysburg. I know that there was an address there, and I know that probably some people died. Oh, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I heard a couple people died during D-Day. I don't know. I haven't seen I mean, Saving Private Ryan in a while. Two. At least two people died at D-Day. <laughs> the, I, when we were talking about the dinner, because, yeah... You, Did the dinner make your list? It didn't make mine, okay. but... It was fucking terrible, but it didn't. It didn't make my list. Uh, was there was a lot of terrible movies I saw that didn't make my that didn't make my list. I just mm. I saw a lot of bad movies last year. <laughs> like uh, so, with the dinner, it was like okay, the situation that they're in here, I can see that being done interestingly because we have because there was that Wild Tales movie mm -hmm. that had a similar section in it yeah. where it was someone trying to from wealth who was possibly going to cover up something terrible that their son did. Yeah, 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 because the son had like drunk, drunk driving hit somebody yeah. and they were trying to pay the gardener to take the fall for him. 
Yeah. And that was interesting, although it was it played was. more for humor than the dinner was. It was, yeah. And it was certainly played more for humor, but with Steve Coogan's character in this, though, like, you have nothing in this film. You just have those, the kids being cartoonish monsters, and then you have Steve Coogan as this character who's like a failed writing student trying to write Woody Allen. Uh -huh. Is really what Steve Coogan was like in this movie. And then it's about mental illness. Then it's about Gettysburg. And then it just ends randomly. It's at, at the ending. Because, um, okay, there's, there's Steve Coogan's character, and then there's his brother, Richard, Richard Gere, Gere, who's like running for senator or whatever. Yeah. And Steve Coogan has a son, and the brother has a son, and then also an adopted son, mm -hmm. a little black boy. And the, so the two oh, little yeah. white boys are uh, are hanging out, and the, the the little black son is with them as well, and the two little white boys murder a homeless woman by, like, beating her in, like, a little ATM alcove and then yeah. setting her on fire, and the little black boy films them yeah. and then blackmails them mm -hmm. um, because he puts it on YouTube but with, like, the voices altered. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would actually help, if anything. <laughs> I feel no. like probably the, the black son's gonna get in trouble for filming a woman's death and then putting it on YouTube. Yeah, they could trace what computer that comes <laughs> like, from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hindsight being twenty twenty as it is. Yeah. That's also pretty shitty. Uh, um, and so Steve Coogan now has to figure out if he's gonna like, you know, let his son and I don't think he really cares much about Richard Gere's son. The the then the wives too are involved. Whether they're gonna let these two little monster children go to jail. Um, or if they're gonna somehow hush up the adopted son. Mm -hmm. And so he ends up like, I, at, at the end, it's left kind of arbitrary whether he murders the adopted son or not. Because he like, yeah. lures him out into the snow yeah. and is gonna like, beat his brains in with a mm -hmm. rock. And it's like, I was having a nice evening. <laughs> and I, movies are allowed to be a bummer. Don't get me wrong, I don't like bummer movies, totally. but they're allowed to be a bummer. This movie yeah. was like, aggressively and meanly a bummer. It was in, in the way that Steve Coogan was teaching his classroom. That's the way the movie was communicating to us, the audience. Yeah, I forgot about that. It it was a movie that I never dreamed would have been as bad as it was. Like, not that I was like, oh, I, was I can't. Expecting like the the loft. You, yo, yeah, because I mentioned that in the. I remember mentioning that in the review for the movie. Because like going into the movie, I. I don't know if I really had an opinion one way or the other about how I don't even know if I got, oh I did get a trailer for it once and the trailer was fine. Uh -huh. uh, with those actors in it, you kind of expect like okay it might be all right at the least. I never thought it would be because I is just awful as it was. And when we reviewed it and even when we were watching it, I remember saying to you in the review like you know what this movie reminds me of The Loft, <laughs> and that is never a good thing. <laughs> never ever a good thing. Because uh, I feel like I, I watched a preview for it, and I could have been making shit up in my mind, but I feel like it, it made it feel like a light-hearted family dramedy, where it's like, Steve Coogan just wanted to go out to dinner with his family. Blah, 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 blah. And then, like, yeah. shows them, like, arguing around a table with no sound. And that is not what this movie was. No, no, the movie's barely even about the dinner. Like, mm -hmm. because from what I remembered about the trailer, and I don't... It would have been one of the indie movies that I saw a trailer for this in front of. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what I remember about the trailer was uh, um, thinking it looked like it was probably more of like a film stage play, and it's yeah. not. Yeah, no, I think it's based on a book because my mom was yeah. mentioning that uh, the book that it's based on is just it's so loosely that she's like, wait, are they talking about blah blah blah? The actual name of this book. And there's other adaptations of this, too. I mm. think that there's other versions of this movie. Or maybe I'm thinking of The Loft again. I know that's <laughs> the case with The Loft. I know that there's a few different versions of that. Uh -huh. And I want to say that is maybe also the case with the dinner. That makes sense. Like, <laughs> first of all, no one ever actually eats dinner in this movie. Like, I don't think they're all even sitting down at the table at the same time at mm. any point. It's just that they all happen to be going to a dinner, and they didn't want to call it Monster Children. Because <laughs> that kind of gives it away. It's too close to Monster Trucks, and that was, kind of, that was a big disappointment last year. I would rather watch Monster Trucks than the dinner again. So would I. I, I would, too. And I, I, I saw Monster Trucks the same night I saw The Bye Bye Man, and it was the better of the two movies that night. I'd rather watch The Bye Bye Man than watch The Dinner again. The Bye Bye Man, I would objectively say, is worse uh -huh. in terms of filmmaking, acting, and even the theatrical experience itself. 
but is it a, what's the Bye Bye Man about? Is oh, it just it's like a sort of like nothing. A... Like it's about a ghost called the Bye Bye Man who kills people, and it, it none of it makes any sense, and it's got it's. They edited it to a PG thirteen, so people bleed black in it. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it's a terror. Objectively, it's a worse movie than the dinner. But I would probably, ra I, I would rather watch the Bye Bye Man again. Unless there's like a protracted conversation where people are trying to decide yeah. whether to turn in the Bye Bye Man for the murders he did, or like cover for him because they love him so much. Then I'm still gonna go down the side of the Bye Bye Man side on scene. No, I yeah, I would between the two movies like. The, okay, the acting and even the filmmaking is better in the dinner, mm -hmm. but if you're just talking about pure watchability, which one? It's like, okay, I would say that the dinner is a better acted and better made movie than Saving Christmas, <laughs> but I would, damn right, I'd rather damn watch right, Saving, rather watch Saving Christmas, Christmas Just again. the dance party over and over yeah. and over again, I'd rather watch than the dinner. Same with the Bye Bye Man. Like, yeah, I'd rather sit through the Bye Bye Man, even though Bye Bye Man made my list, <laughs> and, <laughs> and the dinner didn't, but the dinner was a piece of shit. Speaking of movies I'd rather watch than the dinner, uh, you want to guess my number one? Is it The Snowman? It's The Snowman! <laughs> I'm so glad it's The Snowman! Like, of all the movies on this list, my number one is the only one that I probably, like, watch again of a holiday party. Be yeah! Like, okay, we'll watch A Winter's Tale and watch Motherfucking Snowman, just for the snowman reaction shots. But that was a horrible movie. <laughs> Holy shit, I, of all the movies that kicked, that was on my list, uh -huh. and it was, like, number four or something, like, <laughs> and, uh... What, an emoji movie was number five, and Dave goes, How the fuck is that only number five? I'm like, Just you wait, man. <laughs> wait for the snowman. Of all the movies that I was describing to Dave last night, I had the most fun describing to him the snowman. Same with when I was describing it to Laura when I got home. It's one of those movies. I don't mean to go off again because no, I reviewed it last night. Snowman. But, like, it's one of those movies that. You can't simply just describe it. No, you have to sit someone down <laughs> yeah. and let them watch it, and then watch them watching the snowman. Mm -hmm. I, I love how both of your top two movies, uh -huh. for no reason, have Chloe Sevigny in them. <laughs> <laughs> for no reason! <laughs> she just did not have very good luck on the start of this, this year. She's playing the ex-wife in the flashbacks in the dinner when she it is. When, when it could have been just Rebecca Ferguson again or which no, Rebecca that's for Hall. For some I mean. reason, he like um, he had to have had an ex-wife, and I think it was because he was like beating her or something. But I, I, I don't even know. The snowman. In the snowman. She's in it twice because she plays twins <laughs> for no reason. One of whom gets murdered, and the other one is sad. <laughs> <laughs> there was a. Uh, you were talking about one of the who's the friend character in Fifty Shades Darker? Uh, the photographer? Or yeah, the yeah. Or, or no, no. The, the 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 evil boss. Sorry. Jack Hyde. Jack Hyde. His okay. last name is Hyde. In my head, I was thinking that's a stupid name, but we hadn't gotten to the snowman yet, <laughs> in which the lead character's name is Harry Hole. Harry Hole. <laughs> And I don't think we fucking touched on that once in our review because we were we too did. busy talking about the snowman. We were too busy talking about the snowman and J.K. Simmons being the most obvious pervert ever. <laughs> Just like taking pictures of, like his phone of like topless women that the abortion doctors bring him and to, like show him for reasons. Uh huh. And like um, the, when the uh, when the reporter was all like, "Oh, you know what? You go up and see me sometime." He's like. Click. <laughs> Click. Like, okay. Gross. <laughs> and they still didn't explain those fucking flashing lapels that everyone was wearing. Like, no one uses it. It's not like, they don't ever use it as like a tricorder or any, not a tricorder, a communicator. It's just there and flashing. Yeah. For no I, reason. And, and in the same scene, too, where like his assistant is like creepily watching this happen through like a bookshelf or something <laughs> like that. Like, just, just peering around. Like, it has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> I want to see the parts of this movie that we didn't see. Mm -hmm. That I'd like what you know when they do like um, deleted scenes on like Pixar movies and they yeah. didn't actually animate them, so they're showing you like pages of a storyboard. Yeah, if they could make scenes like that for the scenes that are missing from the snowman, mm -hmm. I think maybe I'd enjoy it. 
Words. It might make worse, but at the same time, like apparently this, it's a okay. I I knew it was a series of books. I knew mm. that this Harry Hole character has been in in other books before, but this is it's movie one, oh. but it's like book seven or something like that. Okay, <laughs> nothing about this movie makes sense. Who read the books? They're like, no, no, the snowman went one is money. How about all the shots in the movie where? The snowman has been put up, but only in areas that the audience could see. Yeah, he's just, he's just there for our for our benefit, like yeah. the, like the hidden one where it's like the, yeah. it shows a snowman, but it's not like a snowman snowman. Mm. But then you go around to the other side, and it is. <laughs> and but it's like a side facing an alley that no one's ever in. Yeah. And it's like, okay, does that have a corpse inside of it, or did you just make a snowman to like give good face? Even that doesn't make sense because by the time they find these bodies, the snowman part of the corpses has melted. It's well, I guess because that's what happened with the Val Kilmer snowman. When yeah. They found the coffee beans in the floor, and they're like, "Where are these coffee beans from?" It's like, oh, turns out he put a snowman head in place of his actual head when he cut it off mm -hmm. with a coffee bean smile. Again, for nobody but us because yeah. it melted by the time the police arrived. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, those man, it, it, the Val Kilmer thing was. That's but, another one where we got crap in the comments because we were saying we're being insensitive. Rewatching that video, guy did that. we were not. We were like, we no, were. what's wrong with Val Kilmer? I think he might be sick. Yeah. That is literally the tone we were taking in that video. It turns out he is sick, and it fucking sucks. Yeah. Maybe he's running out of money, and that's why he did it, but this was not a great and, venue. At the least, like, if, if you're going to have Val Kilmer in here, mm -hmm. and, yeah, he, he, he's, he can't talk anymore... Uh, or it was at least after he had some kind of surgery, I think. But mm -hmm. at the least, try to get somebody who sounds like him. Yeah, or at least have them do a passable Val Kilmer impression. Or at least have them watch the footage while they're doing the lines yeah. so they match his mouth even a little bit. It was... It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It was it was like uh, I mentioned this last night too. I probably mentioned it in the review as well. Where it was like those badly dubbed Steven Seagal movies, yeah, like on the USA it. Network, and it's insane that you're watching it. It's disrespectful and, to the actor. It is. It is, and it's insane that all of this stuff is happened. All everything that is bad and is a mess and is jaw dropping about this film. It's insane that it's happening in a movie. With the ambition it has, the budget it has, the director, or I'm sorry, the direction, uh, the actors, I, the, again, the cast, and it's executive produced by Martin Scorsese. Uh -huh. Like, how? Like, what the hell happened? <laughs> it's missing huge chunks of it. People just, like, appear out of nowhere, characters that they don't explain, and then the characters just disappear. Like, Toby Jones, or that um, that woman with the black hair who mm. shows up, shows her tits to J.K. Simmons, Yeah. showed, like, looks forlornly out of a window, mm -hmm. and then she's just gone. Like, we never see that character again. And it's, again, for those scenes where I would like, like, at least a drawing, and be like, oh, it turns out that she's this, and then mm -hmm. she got murdered or whatever. And, and that opening scene, where it was like, him being abused, him and his mom being abused by... That still was never explained. His dad, dad who's a cop, mark? yeah, but is keeping this family secret, but still beats them... And then leaves, and the kid's upset about this for some reason. The mom's super upset about it, because she kills herself in a frozen yeah. lake. Yeah, and that made even more sense than the ending of this film. The ending <laughs> was the only... Okay, so I did enjoy watching this movie, for, for this terribleness. I did too. The ending was the part that I laughed out loud at, because yeah. it was a super cunning ice ice uh, trap. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, like, he's the... Figure out who the bad guy is, and yeah. he gets uh, Harry Hole's wife and his no, not his wife, his girlfriend and his girlfriend's son. Yeah, who is or is not his son? It's his ex-wife, right? Because she's remarried. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. Maybe it is his son. Maybe I don't it, think so. I I don't think it is his son, if I remember right, because yeah, I think that no. was something that was weird about the movie that probably made more sense in the book. Yeah, maybe. But anyway, uh, the the killer captures both of them and like mm -hmm. has like the loop around the ex-wife's neck yeah he's like oh i'm gonna kill her and harry's like what in the world could that be and the guy's like what and then like there's flashes of movement and all yeah. of a sudden harry's got like the gun in the upper hand and he's missing a finger mm -hmm. but anyway there's like this huge chase around and then harry like gets outside he does like the i saw what you did last summer like what are you waiting for yeah and then the guy like comes out and immediately and unceremoniously plummets into a hole in the ice mm -hmm. that he didn't see and I have to assume 
that Harry either like ran out real fast and dug a hole in the ice, or yeah. ran out, found a hole, like lined up where he thought the guy was gonna come out, yeah. and like hope that he just walks like this. It was an ending that at least, at least I think I have a theory as to why it's so badly edited, which I cannot <laughs> say about anything else in this movie. But why with this, a theory? with this ending, because the the trailer shows a different ending. Uh -huh. The trailer for it shows a thing that seems like it was supposed to happen at that moment and is not in the movie. I don't remember that at all. The trailer shows a part where he's standing in front of the cabin that is now on fire, mm -hmm. and he's screaming in front of it seemingly having seen the movie seemingly implying that maybe his ex-wife and kid died in this fire uh -huh. and then maybe yeah, that didn't test well yeah which is like okay like everything else in this movie was so fucking good <laughs> like <laughs> so some of the stuff in this ending it's it's bad editing I can maybe at least theorize it's so badly edited because maybe it was quickly reshot, or maybe it was quick, maybe not even reshot, but just quickly re edited to make it look like something else happened. Uh huh. It, I don't know if that's true, but unlike anything else in this movie, at least I have a kind of a theory about that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, you know what? I love this fucking movie. Like, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's horrible. terrible. But it's worth watching. Just yeah. again, for first of all, the snowman reaction shots. Yeah. I mentioned in the review, they're like, they'll, they're like, two people have, having like an intense conversation. Yeah. Then they'll cut to a snowman, like. Yeah. So it's like the third, <laughs> the third quiet member of the conversation. We, the, it's the one movie this year that is like the one where it's like, there's gotta be a bad movie party with this. Yes. Because at the, because like every other movie that falls into that category with us, whether it's Saving Christmas or Winter's Tale or something <laughs> like that, like you just have to see this movie. You don't know how bad this is going to be because from the trailer, it you would think that at the least maybe it's just not very entertaining. Yeah, it just looks like a generic horror movie where like the guy should take a snowman. Oh, it is, it is not so generic. much worse than that. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> and it was. It was number four on my list. Uh -huh. I'm going to have to go home and brag to David because like, Roji was his number one worst movie. And I feel like that means I won since mine was higher on your list. It was higher list. on my, yeah, it yeah. was, it was higher on my list. Cause at least with the emoji movie, I didn't think there was anything missing. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> like the emoji movie, like as terrible as it was, it has a beginning, middle and end and I can follow its narrative. Uh -huh. Um, the Snowman, it, it's number four on mine only because, like, a Tyler Perry movie beat it out. And, <laughs> and like, Kevin Sorbo religious propaganda. <laughs> like, just the poster for the Snowman movie, I was having so much fun just, like, drawing little hands. Yeah. I tweeted a couple, I tweeted one where I, like, drew a little pie in his hand and said, like, Mr. Policeman, I made you a pie. And just, like, just, like, miles of entertainment value out of that picture alone. That poster that just has nothing to do with it. sardonic Snowman. That that's not even reflective of any scene from that movie. Nope. That, that poster. Because <laughs> he leaves the messages, but it, it never says, you know, you could have saved Mr. Policeman, you could have saved them, I gave you all the clues. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the snowman never looks quite that fucking blasé and sardonic. It would be like if you... It's, it's, it'd be like you're watching a movie about Jeffrey Dahmer, but for no reason the poster is one of the Zodiac Killer's puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> I, when we were going more it, 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 more down our list that down your list that mm -hmm. was the one I was predicting was gonna be number one. Uh -huh. I was like, we're getting to a point where it's between the dinner and the snowman, and I'm putting all my money on the snowman, but maybe the dinner will be a spoiler. <laughs> the dinner was the dinner was terrible, and I never plan on watching that movie again as long as I live. But mm. I feel like for the bottom ten movies, even if we enjoyed watching it. If it was bad, then it deserves a spot yeah. of honor because it is like number one is sort of a spot of honor, and it's, it is it had you know movies like Saving Christmas and A Winter's Tale. And yeah, it was number one as well, mm -hmm. and it's because we enjoyed it, but it's just not a good movie. <laughs> no, and that's and that's definitely the snowman. Like when I sent you the list of the bad movies you you saw, that was my prediction. Of what was going to be number. One. I don't even know what would beat it. Honestly. <laughs> It was the most flabbergasted that I was in a movie this like, year. Like, I expected it to be bad, and I was still so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch it again. I well, want to see it so I'll bad. wait until it's out on Blu-ray. I gotta show it to Laura. I'm I gotta not... show it to David, because apparently he, he knows what, what, uh, what it's about now.
<laughs> he was even he was like, I've got to see this movie. <laughs> and Dave's, you and I and Brian are quicker to seek out something that we hear is outrageously bad than, uh -huh. than Dave is. This is one where he was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> I, I really got to see. When it comes out on video, like. We'll have, a, we'll have a viewing party. Yeah, like, you and Dave, me, and Laura will all get together and we'll watch this. <laughs> Seriously, watch this movie. So good. Any... So bad. Final, final thoughts? thoughts? Again, um... Just, like... I feel like one of my New Year's resolutions this year is going to be finally get to the movie Encino Man. Yes. And it's because... First of all, it keeps coming up in conversation. Like, there's yeah. at least three of these videos where it's like, whatever happened to Brendan Fraser? You know, I never did watch Encino Man's because of that goddamn haircut. And you're like, you know, they changed his hairstyle several times. And I'm like, yeah, but they never, like, make it look good. It's still the 90s. And you're like, <laughs> I think that you can get through it. I'm like, man, okay, well, maybe next month. This year, I will get through Encino Man. I'll watch it with you. I never need an excuse to watch Encino <laughs> Man. Still holds up. I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe we could like rent it because apparently Brendan Fraser needs the money. You won't rent. I'll buy that shit. I don't know why I don't already own it. It could go right next to Hot to Try. We'll watch Encino Man and we'll watch George of the Jungle and I. We'll re re watch The Mummy because that came up one of the videos that you hadn't seen in a really long time. I haven't seen it in a long time. And I've got it on a box set. I'd watch that again, especially how Look bad like that newer... like a Brendan Fraser night. Yeah, yeah. It's especially how bad that newer Mummy movie was. That's why it came up, because I was like, that's only a Mummy as far as I'm concerned. The Mummy is the Brendan Fraser the Brendan mummy. Fraser one. <laughs> what about Boris Karloff? Did he have sand powers? <laughs> he had black and white powers. <laughs> Not the same. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'm going to... Uh, Transfer this over and see if we beat Dave, <laughs> me and Dave's video last night for in terms of length. I mean, like, probably not, but here's open. <laughs> see ya. Bye.